for the longest time I have been trying to get networking working for internet connectivity in FreeDOS so I could actually show you guys what the internet in DOS looks like. I finally got it to work so now I can finally show you something so here we go. I could not get this working with MS-DOS. No way. Because I kept running out of memory. It's a conventional memory thing. I'm not going to explain it any further than that. FreeDOS has better memory management options, as you can see even here at the startup. So, And you'll notice that it does grab an IP. Blam! Right there. And it works. That's a beautiful thing. At the prompt, I can actually ping a site. And it will send replies. Beautiful. Now, actually, okay. Arachne is what I'm going to show. That is a browser. Um, I do have Leet IRC, which is an IRC client. Unfortunately, whenever I try to, uh, it will launch, but when I try to save the settings, it locks up. So I can't show it. It's some stupid thing. I can't figure out why it's locking, but eventually I'll figure it out. Lynx, as you know, or if you didn't know, is a text-based browser and a very basic one. That has a configuration file issue that I have not figured out yet either. So I can't show that. But I can show Arachne, so it's better than nothing. Actually, uh, before I do that, I'm going to purposely uh, dump Arachne's cache so you can see how long it takes to load stuff. Ah, doing DOS commands. Old school. As you can see, FreeDOS is a lot like regular MS-DOS. It's not really much different. I mean, it is modernized, so... Anyway, so, here we go, Arachne. Dun, dun, dun. See the cool animation at the top right, which alternates between, like, a sunburst type of thing and a lightning bolt type of thing. Right now, it's loading its default homepage, which is arachne.cz. If we go take a look at PC Mac, and loading, 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 even at its fastest, it's still slow because this is the DOS environment. Okay, done. And we'll load an article. All right, done with that. And you can read things easily and see images. Uh, not PNGs, though. I don't think these. I think I posted JPEGs in this. Unless these are PNG. Maybe it does do PNGs. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's a very basic browser. Um, no Java. JavaScript, I think, yes. Java, I don't think so. Obviously, no Flash. None. Zero Flash. If I do... Actually, wait. Can I just go to... Oh, F3. Oh, no. I gotta delete the whole thing. Blah. Okay. If I... Just for fun, if I go to YouTube.com... <laughs> Like I said, no flash for DOS. So you're not going to see any videos. You're just going to see some text. I don't even think you can see the thumbnail images. And whenever I click to go a uh, page down one, it just takes a while to respond because it, the YouTube.com homepage is just so damned large. I remember when YouTube used to be so much faster back in the day now it's just a big ball of suck. And you know what the funny part is? No one will disagree with me on that point. <laughs> Ask anyone who's been on YouTube for a long time, they'll say, yeah, it used to be a lot better when it was simple. Now it's not simple anymore. Google just went and messed everything up. Anyway, so there's YouTube. Now, if I hit F10, now you'll notice there's a sidebar here. and desktop is F10, so if I do F10, I should try that again. There we go. Now you'll notice that Arachne is more than just a browser. It's also an email client. Uh, it's also a file browser and a couple other things as well. So if I go to all files, by the way, now you can do, uh, I can disable the icons, so 
kind of looks like that, Linux E, or I can enable the icons. This is also an image gallery, and it shows all the images here. Pretty sweet. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, I closed out of the browser by mistake. <laughs> I'm still not totally used to it, sorry. Where was I? Okay. Yeah, it was here. Uh, then there's text files, and I'm not exactly sure... I think this just browses text files. I think that's it. So if I read this one, it will read the text file. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, if you do HTML pages, it will only show HTMs. There's the dialer for when you want to do dial-up internet. Obviously don't have to because I'm on a LAN. Your computer is like the equivalent of my computer, so you can browse the drives here. Really, you know, not that much different than uh, what we saw a moment ago. If we go to options, now here's where we can do some stuff. We'll start with the internet settings. Now this is where you can set, it, it is a pop client. It doesn't do IMAP. I wish it did IMAP, oh, that would be so cool. So you have your POP3 settings, your SMTP settings, which is for incoming and outgoing. Now I like this is that you can actually masquerade the user agent as something else. So if you wanted um, this browser to say, I'm not Arachne, I am Sea Monkey, or I am Firefox, or I am even MSIE 7, you can do it, which is cool. So there's these settings. Let me go back a page. Local settings, where you can set things like your time zone, character sets. There's not too many options for character sets, but this, this is a, a basic browser. Um, now, if we go to personal settings, here's where you can set uh, some more email settings here. Your email signature, mail path because it's got to store them somewhere when you download on pop was I just here? I think I was just there, yeah preferences and perform, okay now this essentially it's just about performance and how it looks, that's all this does really there are a couple of funny parts here, like for example under system colors the ordinarily it is this green, the feel unix setting those that know this browser know that this is not the default look. I'm actually using one called Mr. Norton, which is not a reference to Norton Antivirus. That's a reference to Norton Commander, which is different. And it makes a jab at Windows here by calling it Windows with a Z, which I personally think is stupid, but eh, whatever. It's a free browser, so I guess you can't complain. It even has options for how you want to handle uh, animated GIFs, and it actually has a screensaver. Here it is. Ooh, screensaver in DOS. Right. Which, you know, on older computers this would actually matter. Because, now here's a little bit of monitor history for you before continuing. Uh, originally, monitors did have a problem with burn-in. Okay, that is the reason the screen saver exists, because it saves the screen from a burn-in. So if you actually wanted to use FreeDOS on real deal old school hardware, particularly on a monitor that could potentially have a burn-in issue if you left it on the same screen too long, the Arachne browser would be actually be very advantageous to use. Um, so for those of you that got a really old, clunky old computer, like we're talking 8086, 8088, 286, or very early 386 uh, style with a IBM 5151 monitor or some just really, really old um, prior, uh, pre VGA even, or very early VGA that had uh, the burn in issues. So you can set the screensaver. And that is cool. And there is also, I, I think I browsed, 
oh there we go the scroll bar style now right now you'll notice that it has the arrow up and down right next to each other which is called next step arrows at the top and then next step arrows at the bottom which would take these and put them here arachne no arrows uh, clarence no scroll bars ms windows like if i did this one which would probably be the one most of you would be familiar with. I think it puts an arrow up here and a down arrow down here. So if I hit OK Save and I use new settings, yeah, it does. Now see the arrow is here and this arrow is here, which for most of you would be normal. Now if I go to an email, and here's how email looks. So if I go your email, I think I already sent a test message to myself. Yeah, I did. Well, let me go back to email and do get new mail, see if I got any new mail. Well, I got these test messages here. Let me delete these first. So I will... Oh, trash. And trash that one too. And your email. And inbox. Okay, so I got the welcome wagon notice. And I will go to index your email and compose. Now it takes the signature from sign.txt which you saw in a previous configuration screen so I will send an email to myself subject line another test from Arachne another test email from Arachne. Now remember it will add in the signature here. You can set the encoding. You can actually add attachments if you want to. And I think, I think, this will actually understand long file names, which is really awesome. Uh, there, Remember that option a while back? Well, I don't know if I pointed it out, but you actually have Windows 95 long file name options, so you're not stuck with what's called 8 plus 3, meaning a character file name, three character extension, which is uh, either called 8 plus 3 or 8.3 and uh, the only other option you can really do here you could save it to the outbox which I believe means save as draft or you can do an external editor which will shell it to I don't know which editor but you know what I don't care because I'm just gonna send the mail just to show you so send and to the best of my knowledge this does not do SSL email so for those of you using Hotmail or Gmail I don't think it would work if you do have or may maybe it will I didn't see it in the setting but maybe it has it I'm not sure but anyway get new mail okay and there it is another test if I read it there it is it's crazy to see email look this way and when you hit reply you have the option to quote or not so if I hit reply oh I ran into an error oh my god Try that again. Ah. Well, that sucks. Well, let me try it without quoting. See if that works. Ah. That's a pity. Can I forward it? No. Ah, that blows. Well, what? <laughs> I'm surprised they got so much. I'm surprised they got this far. <laughs> to be honest with you. Well, anyway. Uh, there is Arachne in a nutshell, so now I have finally posted a retro video that shows the internet. Go back to the home page here. And back to... Uh, if I can type it. There you go. Back to PC Mac. So, there you go. You have seen the internet in DOS, in free DOS, in virtual, uh, excuse me, VMware, specifically but it would look no different if you were on the real hardware and if you do happen to attempt this on the real hardware I would say please post a video it would be true that if you actually did do web browsing on real vintage hardware I would consider that to be a colossal waste of time but then again you would score so many geek points it wouldn't even be funny that's that's bragging rights right there saying <laughs> I surf the internet in DOS, bucko. Ha <laughs> ha. Or maybe people would just say, "Wow, why did you do that?" Uh <laughs> Anyway, that's it. Take it easy.